My fellow softballs, what do you do when you're in the ring against an orthodox fighter and your jab is no longer effective? It's being blocked, it's being timed, it's being countered. Your jab has been ruled ineffective against the fighter that you're in the ring with. What do you do? That's what we're going to cover in today's lesson. I want to show you three things you can do that can set up more punches, break up the rhythm, and possibly make your jab more effective. The jab, the most essential punch that there is in boxing, it can do almost anything. It can set up punches. It can break through your opponent's guard. It can keep your opponent at bay. It can do so many things. But when you're in the ring and your fighter that you're fighting against is able to shut down your jab, what do you do as a softball fighter fighting an orthodox fighter and your most important tool, the most important weapon that you have has been shut down. And why does it become shut down? Maybe the fighter that you're in the ring with is extremely skilled. Maybe they just know how to time your jab so then they counter it every single time. Maybe when you're throwing your jab, it's getting blocked. Or maybe when you're throwing your jab, your opponent is crowding you so you're not able to make any room for your jab and they just smother your jab. So there are three things that I want to walk you through that you can use to set up more punches against your orthodox fighter when your jab has become ineffective. So the very first thing that you need to think of is why is my jab becoming ineffective? Why isn't it working? That's the first thing you need to start processing in your head when you're in the ring. And for beginners, this is very difficult to comprehend or accomplish at the same time because your number one goal is not to get hit. You have fear of getting hit. But the more that you can think in your head, why is my punch getting shut down? then you can start to build a game plan of what do I do when my jab is no longer effective? And so let's walk through three simple things you can do to set up more punches, throw off your orthodox fighter when your jab isn't working, and how to close the distance. So when you're in the ring against your orthodox fighter and your jab's no longer working, who knows why it's not working? Maybe he's just constantly knocking your jab down. He's pairing it. He's blocking it. He's countering it. He's smothering you it. So what you want to do, the very first thing you want to start doing is you've processed that when you're in the ring right now, your orthodox fighter is constantly blocking your punch. And what I mean by he's blocking your punch, he may just put his hands up or he or she may be knocking down your punch. They, be, they may be knocking down your punch, pairing your punch, or they put both of their hands out. So as you start to process those things in your head, you need to think, what can I do to break through my orthodox fighter's armor in the ring? So the very first thing that you need to learn how to do is you're in your boxing stance, your jab's no longer effective. So every time you throw your jab, it gets knocked down. That's what we're going to think of right now. That's the... That's the problem that you're having right now against your orthodox fighter. Every time you shoot a jab, he knocks it down, and it's no longer effective. So you're in the ring, you're moving around, your jab gets knocked down, jab gets knocked down, jab gets knocked down. So you know that every time you're going to throw your jab now, your orthodox fighter is going to try and knock it down. What do you do in this case? You're going to have to learn how to time it. So what you're going to do is, you're in your boxing stance, you're going to have to learn how to feint. Huh. And that's all you want to do. You want to see if your orthodox fighter is going to throw his hand out to knock down that jab, you found the chink in their armor. So what you want to do, you're going to move around, 
move around, time, time, faint. Your orthodox fighter is going to most likely drop that hand. So you know that. You baited them the first time. The second time, you're going to move around, move around, you're going to faint, and then you're going to come over with a long looping hook. Boom. That's what you want to do. Is because if you know your orthodox fighter is going to knock down every single jab that you're going to throw, you want to break your rhythm up, you want to faint, come over the top. And all that punch is to do is just to get over and tap them in their chin, tap them in their tempo. It's not going to be a pretty punch, but it's something that will land and break up the rhythm. And as you continue to move around, continue to move around, move, move, faint, boom, I come over. And you'll see that it's a stiff hook. It's a stiff, long, half jab, long hook. That's what I like to call it. And so as you do that, what's going to happen is you break, you broke up the rhythm, and what do you think is going to happen? Now, your orthodox fighter is going to be worried about you fainting, and so they're going to keep their hands up like this. What does that do for you now? It helps you to bring back your jab now. And when you start bringing back that jab, what do you think that orthodox fighter is going to do? He's going to keep his hands up. He's going to try and probably get back into that rhythm of knocking your punch down. As soon as you see them do it once, you're going to faint, come over the top. And that's the beauty of using more than your jab to lead with. Now, the second thing that you can do against your orthodox fighter when they shut down your jab is you want to learn how to bait them in. And when you bait them in, you're going to lead with your left hand. And this is especially good for your fighters that are crowding your jab. If they're crowding your jab, so every time you throw your jab, your orthodox fighter just closes the distance and you're not able to get your jab off. So what do you do? You're in your stance, you're moving around the ring, you want to hop back, load that back foot, shoot that left hand. That's what you want to do. And the reason you want to do that is because you need to create distance. Your jab is no longer effective. Your orthodox fighter has shut it down. So you need to learn how to lead with something else. And if they're crowding you, you need to make distance for your punches. And your orthodox fighter most likely isn't going to expect a lead left hand if you've been leading with your jab the entire time. So you're going to move around the ring, move around, shoot back, load that back foot, shoot that left hand, come back. And when you pull that left hand back, you can pivot out of the way or just come back to your normal boxing stance. Because if you're able to catch them at the right time, draw them in, you hop back, shoot that left hand, you've created enough distance between you and your orthodox fighter that your left hand becomes a lot more effective to lead with, come back, and then you can move out of the way. And this is really good to use against fighters that are constantly crowding you. And when your jab doesn't work anymore, what else are you going to do? Because if a fighter is constantly crowding you and your jab's not going to work, you can move around the ring and try and like, create as much space as you can. But the more that you start moving back, so you're going to start moving back, trying to throw your jab, but they're crowding you. So you can't keep them away with your jab unless you have an extremely well-developed jab. And few softball fighters have that well of a developed jab that they can constantly keep popping, popping, popping their orthodox fighter off. So what you want to do is you want to break up the rhythm, you want to draw them in, draw them in, shoot back, shoot that left hand, come back. That's all you want to do. So that's the second thing that you can do to lead with against your orthodox fighter when your jab has become shut down. Now the third thing that you can do is you're going to try and build up a three punch combination. And how do you do that? So this is something that you can use against an orthodox fighter that every time you shoot your jab, they just get a little bit out of range. And so as you shoot your jab, your orthodox fighter pulls out of the range just enough so you can't close that distance. 
And so instead of trying to close the distance with the jab, you want to break up that rhythm and you want to do something that's unexpected. So as you're in the ring, you're moving around, you're moving around, you're moving from side to side, side to side, you're moving, and then what you want to do is you want to slip in with that left hand, you're leaning with that left hand, you've closed the distance, you want to come over with that right hook, and you want to come through with that left hand. And so, as you do that, what you're doing is, you're closing distance while you're moving from side to side, and you're moving your head. And the beauty of this combination is, you're closing distance with punches. Because a lot of times, you can just close the distance without throwing a punch. But if you're able to close the distance at the same time as you're throwing a punch, especially a lead left hand, you can come back with the hook and then come back with another left hand. And you do this because you want to break up the rhythm. Your jab is being shut down against this orthodox fighter. They're pulling out just enough so your jab is no longer effective. So what do you do? Go into your toolbox and lead with your left hand. But as you lead with your left hand, you want to close the distance. And so, I'm going to start all the way back here by the rope. I'm going to slip, shoot here with my left hand. And then I'm going to come over with my right hook. And then I'm going to come through my left hand. I moved a good four feet with three punches against my orthodox fighter. And that's the beauty of that last three punch combination. If you're not able to close the distance with your jab, you're going to have to close the distance with your left hand and you're going to move slightly to the outside, to the outside of your orthodox fighter. So as you continue to move, you're moving like on an angle and you're closing the distance with three very effective punches. One may land, two may land, three may land. And so one of the things that my father taught me is that if you're not able to land the first punch very clean, if you're not able to land the second punch very clean, always make sure that that third punch you're throwing, if you're throwing a three punch combination, put as much force as you can behind it. Because when you punch in bunches, that third punch or that fourth punch is most likely unexpected when you're in the boxing ring. So let's put all three of those things together right now in a scenario of our jab isn't working anymore against our orthodox fighter. So my jab is being shut down. I'm just tapping my jab out there. It's being knocked out every single time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fake, come over the top with my long extended hook, kind of like a half jab, leading in like this. I'm not coming in like this. I'm coming in like this. And so you'll see that that hook comes over. My elbow turns up. All I'm trying to do is I'm trying to catch my orthodox fighter on the side of his face, maybe in a temple, so I can break up the rhythm. And then that can lead to other things that I can set up down the road. Now, I'm against an orthodox fighter that will not let me get my punches off. So I'm throwing my jab, he's just crowding me, crowding me, so I'm gonna do step back, shoot my left hand. I'm gonna step back, shoot my left hand. So step, boom. So you'll see that I load that back leg as much as I can, and I put as much force as I can into that left hand. And I can bring it back, come back to my box hands, or I can bring it back and just move back a little bit more. Now the third thing that you can do against your orthodox fighter is close the distance with punches when your jab is no longer effective. So you keep your hands up, try and think of, you need to close the distance, you're throwing your jab, your jab is no longer effective because your orthodox fighter is pulling just out of range. So what do you do? Close the distance with your left hand. So you're moving, moving. Your jab, he just moves out the way. You step, he moves out the way. You throw another jab, he just moves out the way. So what do you do? Pop, pop, pop. And then just come back. And 
you've closed the distance with three very effective punches. They're fast, they're quick, and that's the beauty of doing something and leading with something other than your jab against your orthodox fighter. What are your thoughts? Is this something that you can use in your next sparring session, in your next training session? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I appreciate your time and have a fantastic day.